Hello, this is Cuckoo. How are you? I hope you're good. Uh, I want to talk about my next live set, and it's going to happen in uh, the 21st of October in Frederikstad. It's a small town, city, town, I'd say, in Norway. And they have uh, Norway's biggest animation film festival there. And I've been part of that several times when I was working as an animator. But now I'm going to perform there as a musical artist. And I thought, like, it is an animation festival and I want to perform there with visuals, interactive, rich, animated visuals. And that's the whole premise of me being there performing. And it's also the premise of why I'm sitting down here talking to you. Let me just finish off the preparations of my tea. Some thesis. <laughs> so, where do I start? I met with the organizer of the festival and we started talking about live visuals and uh, and concerts and performers. And she said, like, you know, there is an open slot at the festival. Why don't you come and play at the festival? And I was like, yes, I'd like to do that. But being an animation festival, I would also like to have some really good visuals. And it's going to take time. And am I up for it? And I shortly decided that, yes, I'm up for it. So I'm going to create some visuals for it. So where do we start when creating visuals for a live set but for me it always starts with kind of uh, anxiety <laughs> lots of anxiety and then it kind of uh, slowly trickles over into some creative ideas and for me i always start thinking about story telling stories and actually if i go back to my life as an animator and animation director it's kind of maybe what I miss the most from that. I don't particularly miss the work of an animator. That kind of wore me down uh, heavily. But telling stories, something about that, that is, it's worth all the hard work. But for live visuals, I think if you tell too much of a story, uh, the story is going to take over. And then it's going to be like a story with some background music. But I don't want that. I want like foreground music with background visuals. And there's a fine line there. Like if you create visuals that take over and tell a story of its own, then the music starts becoming secondary. And so I want to kind of try to strike a balance there between visuals and music, where music is just dominating a little bit more than the visuals, but also the visuals being as involving as possible so you kind of enter this uh, world that I create with visuals and music. So the music is going to be based on this um, set that I made on the Digitone. So I'm going to perform on a Digitone only. Maybe I'll bring a, uh, a, a like a solo synth as well. I haven't decided, but I really like to keep it minimalistic. So I'm going to stand there in the middle of a huge bright projection just playing this one little synth. I think it's gonna look epic. So the sounds is kind of like this. You might have heard, I performed uh, like almost the whole set in uh, another video. Here's another song. Yeah. I think I'm going to invite the, the audience into this sort of Mega Drive-esque uh, world of music and, and visuals. And the visuals, I haven't really decided exactly where to start with the visuals, so that's why I'm making this video to kind of document the process of making visuals for me. So I've started out by writing a story, and I've been writing a lot kind of letting my mind uh, freely wander through different ideas, yeah. And as, as I grow older, I kind of find myself um, putting a damper on stuff or putting like a filter on a lot of stuff. But now with uh, storytelling and in, in this phase, no filters, just write whatever comes to mind and if you find like a wave of good ideas just follow up on that don't judge yourself 
And so I'm not trying to judge anything that comes to mind, just trying to go down every path that comes to mind. And one such, like a key thing, this is a, like a book that I, uh, a notebook that I keep in handy and uh, I draw, I write little notes and make little notes and draw. <laughs> and I think there was, if I, I, I made this sketch here, it was one of the first sketches I made. It looks like nothing, but it's just a silhouette on me with a big projections with black shapes at, over. So that was an idea that was kind of a key for me, like, oh, yeah, in a bright colored projection and just black shapes. Usually with visuals is the opposite, it's like bright shapes on black backgrounds. So I had my kind of triggered something in my mind. And and then after some time, I started making, um, I started drawing characters, character design. I checked this out. There's one character. And I felt like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's go down the same kind of route. Here's another. Uh, and kind of finding a vibe here that I hadn't put into words at this stage. Finding a vibe, like, yeah, this could be something. How about this, this wacky dude it could be part of that. And as I was drawing these characters, <laughs> what's this? Oh, it's not really, oh, that's a dude and a little dog. As I was drawing these characters, oh, here's another one in the kind of same, same flow, weird, weird characters. They kind of unlock things in my brain, brain and start thinking about storylines. And I started thinking about a storyline involving two androids. And I was thinking along lines of, of uh, androids. What is an android? An android is part human, part machine. How much is human? How, how much is machine? And then started thinking like, is it another thing entirely? Or is it both? And then thinking like, what if two androids fall in love? What would that mean? How do androids find attraction? And started thinking about these things a little bit, just wondering. So I started going uh, down that route. And also in my head, I started calling this non-binary code. You know how code is always binary? It's like zero or one. And and that's like the most common or maybe efficient way of uh, of uh, presenting code to a computer. But if the code was non-binary, maybe it can be like a gazillion times more complex to to the point where it's outperforming uh, binary code. And also having that uh, Android's uh, being a non-binary kind of platform, also, also kind of embracing the non-binary uh, within us humans, and as a theme of this whole visual project, just opening my head to all of these things, and uh, and then I started drawing more of these characters, and I made this character design of the two uh, androids. And that's kind of where it started falling into place. Sometimes uh, just a photo or just one picture, one drawing or a sentence could be the key that locks, unlocks, unlocks like the path to the, the f project feeling, uh, I don't know, feeling like worthwhile, feeling legit, feeling like, yes, this is it. And for me, when I drew this picture, it became that, that kind of moment where it's, it unlocked something to me. So uh, that this whole thing here is the starting point for the visuals that's going to be accompanying this jolly music. Yeah. So it's going to be a world with a sort of a beginning, an intro, uh, some action and uh, yeah tension I think tension needs to be withheld 
in in the whole and retained in the whole uh, show. But it's going to be a forty-five minute show, but it's not going to be a forty-five minute short film. Make a forty-five minute animation film that is insane. It's a very hard work to make 45 minutes of animation instead I'm thinking about making let's see how many songs are there yeah it's the last one it's the last one 10 songs and I'm thinking about making 10 visual scenes are interactive some of them might be kind of a loop of moments uh, another one might be like one super slow camera dolly shot going further and further into a scene and then uh, unveiling uh, things along that smooth long zoom maybe in a like if the song is five minutes maybe the zoom is four minutes and then it lands on the uh, somewhere Okay, let let me let me read a little bit of what I have so far, and bear in mind this is just a starting point. When I started to create the actual visuals, this is where I drew the inspiration from. It's not going to be like a proper script to a short film. No, this is the inspiration, and I could just pick and expand from this. So the outline of the story uh, that I Currently, I call it non-binary code. An android couple, Diane and Sheen, show mysterious affection to one another, meeting in a futuristic cyberpunk geisha-like club. Their affection is frowned upon by a glitch in the shadows. After parting ways, they can't stop thinking about each other. As an android, what draws you to one another? Is it the same affection? as between humans. The following night, Sheen is nowhere to be found. Diane starts asking around. Nobody has seen them. Sheen has managed to leave an encoded message for Diane. They've been captured by a purity organization. The message is delivered in NBC, non-binary code, a new highly efficient coding standard invented by androids. It's too complex for humans to read and decipher, and for the conventional computers, it takes a long time. Knowing it's bait, Diane gets upgraded in the underground to rescue Sheen, regardless of the dangers. In a violent street fight leading to the base where Sheen is being held captive, Diane manages to free Sheen. In an attempt to flee together, the organization gets back up and Diane stays behind to hold the fort while letting Sheen flee the scene against their will. It's Sheen's turn to get powerful upgrade, armors and poisonous needles. Sheen manages to poison the most of the organization in their effort to free Diane. On their way to freedom, on the highway, the boss of the organization catches them on a motorcycle and there is a final very explosive showdown between the parties, both on motorcycles against a futuristic Tokyo backdrop. In the end, the boss is showing all his god of explosive and they all die together. The androids are destroyed but slowly start repairing themselves and embrace. At the very end, the boss is about to die. Diane and Sheen offers to save his life, making him an android. He cries but accepts. So these are the words that I've landed on and now I'm going to start working with the actual visuals. So I've got one sketch of a, a drawing that I made in this book with ink and then I've got one more picture that I created digitally. Let's see if I find it. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, I turned the sketch into this drawing and just looking at it on the side and drawing this. And when I drew this, I just wanted to kind of create a visual language that I know I could pull off in terms of making several of these. 
and I wanted it to be free of outlines and more about geometrical shapes and uh, something that works well in projection is kind of shapes and gradients and uh, not too much texture as I was thinking so this is what I have so far and I showed this to to my 10 year old son and when he saw it he was like oh it's cool it looks like uh, oh what's what's the name again and he said oh that's cool it looks like James Charles James Charles who's that I said he was like don't you know who James Charles is he's like a world famous YouTuber no never heard of him I searched it up but it turned out he uh yeah, I could very much see the resemblance and it gave me kind of hope because I made a picture, just one single picture and when my son saw it, it led him to think about this iconic YouTuber that is also uh, kind of a non-binary kind of icon, I guess. But as I said, I don't know anything about James Charles so maybe I'm going to have to study up on that. And maybe those claims are utterly uh, false, but we'll see. So I have hopes in making a visual language that is going to be interesting. I think the biggest challenge will be meeting the deadline. <laughs> Two months It's a little bit short for what I had in mind. I want to make something that's really very, very good. And uh, the second thing that I think is going to be a challenge is to create these scenes in a way they kind of find a sweet spot between something that repeats in a very non-intrusive way so even if it, if it's a loop i want it to be a loop that you can just look at for 10 minutes and it's fine it's going to be yeah still interesting after 10 minutes and then yeah 10 scenes yeah let me know in the comments well how, what do you how do you approach something like this what do you think about my my way of approaching this i think what I, i'd like to do is follow the songs and the the vibe in the songs and create uh, something very colorful and fun and also i wanted to react to the music everything is going to be created in unity 3d and with uh, Video Lab from Teenage Engineering, which is a uh, like a package of assets that makes it easier to produce MIDI uh, interactive uh, visuals. I'm not going to use an, uh, the OPZ app to to show it, so I'm going to compile it for my computer, which makes it much easier because I can also use other assets for Unity. I'm going to use mostly the bare bones of what it's sprites 3d objects and uh, everything that you can do with video lab which is uh, a lot of fun interaction and yeah i think that's gonna conclude part one and uh, wish me luck i'm gonna start working on this for the majority of the next following two months and I'm going to up update you along the way uh, maybe as I've reached my first milestone which would it be to create the first scene for one of the scenes I'm not sure if I'm going to start with a beginning maybe the beginning is going to be a fairly slow one so yeah when I have like one or maybe two yeah one <laughs> when I have my first scene that works and I can sequence it through from the digitone and it responds it responds to uh, to the MIDI yeah I'm gonna catch you uh, catch another video uh, that time <laughs> I'm losing my words I'm gonna drink some tea mmm Hojita one of my favorite teas okay see you in the next video it's going to be an interesting creative journey where I'm really looking forward to creating some higher end visuals than just a, a little demo or something fun. No, I want this to be like 
Very good. And oh yeah, I'm changing my uh, Patreon around so it's going to be monthly from now on. It's going to be much more easy to come in and support me on my Patreon. So please head over to my Patreon if you want to support my uh, my creative work here on YouTube. And um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of stuff for you uh, behind the closed doors of Patreon members as well. So welcome there. Peace out. Thank <music> you.